Hello there, and welcome back to my channel. Okay, so today I'm going to be going over part three in the original trilogy of the Child's Play franchise, Child's Play 3. It is what was supposed to be the concluding chapter of the story of the killer Chucky doll at the time. We obviously know that there's many sequels after that, the new TV series coming out, so it obviously isn't the real end of him. But it's when they stopped calling the movies Child's Play. I actually really didn't even know that there was a third Child's Play movie for, very, for a very long time. Um, I thought it was one, two, Bride and Seed, and I thought there was only just ever those four. So one day, whenever I was flipping through the movie channels and, you know, really rediscovered or discovered it or whatnot, I was like completely blown away. I had no idea. I was thrilled. So there's a part of that nostalgia that I really have and that like joy that kicks this movie up for me. Um, I know that a lot of people don't like it. Um, it's not my favorite. It's lower on my ranking, but I still have a good time with all of the Chucky movies. It follows the story of Andy Barkley eight years later into the future or something like that. And he's now grown up and he's a teenager in military school trying to deal with his traumatic past and Chucky obviously follows him. And he's not played by the same kid that was in the first two movies considering the fact that it only came out nine months after the sequel. So um, with all of that being said, let's get right into Child's Play 3. So this is one of my favorite franchises and I was so happy to figure out that there was another installment that I hadn't seen yet. So I remember watching this and the opening was terrifying. I thought that the concept of bringing Chucky back like that was really, really cool. I love seeing the aftermath of the factory. I've said that many times that seeing the aftermath of a traumatic place or event um, really hits me in my like emotional side like it's really eerie for me it hooks me in right away i did think that whenever i was younger that because his blood got mixed in that there was going to be multiple chuckies running around in this movie but that's not something that they had gone with i think it was because of like budgetary restrictions they wanted to how i wish that they would i don't happen to mind the setting of this movie now it, it's a really here and there thing for me i like the ending the best probably but it's this whole military setup that I think is what kind of puts people off, you know? The fact that the story was rushed and it kind of seems out of place for Chucky to be there and for a doll and for a horror movie slasher thing. So I give it credit for breaking those rules and like the, what you expect, but there is a reason that there are, uh, is a certain structure to the way these movies are done because you can end up trying really hard with something and then have it kind of be like this where the characters are very basic and there's not much that's really juicy to like bite into in the story there. You know, it's very basic in the way that it sets up the world. They do it in a very real way. And I think that when I say basic, what I mean by that is you really understand that there's people there and that the world that they're in and that they're setting up, but you're so just used to that, that all they have to do is kind of hint and you're just like, okay, you just, you set up the world pretty much for them. and. The characters are almost just like stand-ins because we're really only here to see Chucky at this point. And he does have some great kills. I really appreciate that aspect of this movie, I do. But there are parts of it that kind of um, rear off to the side, you know? I do love the funnier side of Chucky, but I also get what people are talking about whenever they say this is where his lines start to go into the funny side. And I think the only reason why it doesn't work that much for me, even though I love that version of Chucky, is because if we're gonna have Chucky, then I want him to be like the first two movies, you know, where he's scary, mouthy, and that's it. Or we're gonna go full on into post scream era where there's a uh, fourth camera wall breaking, where there's just stitch faced Chucky who's just fucking vulgar and spits out at the mouth and he's very meta this child's play three is almost kind of like a perfect bridge between the first two and bride because it you know when you watch them on a work watch them all in order it really does feel like uh something that's pretty much cohesive and we can appreciate the fact that brad dorf is back i'm gonna mention that in every video let's get it talking about the look of the doll so i really like him in this one because I think that they were able to make him move uh, more. Um, but with also that being said, I do prefer the look in Child's Play 2. There was just some different movements of his that 
I think you could tell because of it maybe being a rushed production. And his look always kind of shifts a little bit between each movies. Something I do like is the fact that when I first watched this, I didn't realize when they were made. So I thought that the kid Andy was the same kid from the first two movies. So when we're talking about Andy, the main character, I don't mind the actor who plays him. I think he did a really good job and I think they did a great job casting him because they look very, very similar, I would believe. And I did believe that this was this kid grown up. And I do like the character of Andy and I think that this first set of three movies really sets up the world and sets up the trilogies and I kind of like that Child's Play is about Andy. And I like him growing up, I like seeing him fight, I like seeing him kind of having the, uh, the strength to, to be able to be more aggressive. You know, when you're younger like that, how he was in the first one, that's part of the helplessness that made those movies so uneasy. So that carries over into this one, but it's because of the good jobs the first two movies did, not anything that this movie's doing. So we already go in being aware of Chucky and being afraid of him. So it's not that they do the best job showing Chucky as uh, like a, a force in this one, but we get that he is one. Um, but it's nice being able to see Andy face off with him and kind of start that growth where everything else had kind of been put behind him but you could tell that there was this this lack um where he was still trying to move on with his life and hopefully at the end of this event we can assume that for some period of time he lived somewhat of a normal life and i hope that he was able to get some closure let's talk about the kind of plot okay so i like the idea of chucky finding a new little kid and like a new child to be able to put a soul into a new body all right, that's really cool, you know? Um, after the concept of the first one, even though he was going after Andy, that's kind of a, one of the ways to change it up. So I appreciate that aspect of it as well because then it's not just the same thing over and over again. In this one, he's kind of just trying to torture Andy, just trying to like piss him off, you know? Um, so I like, I like that aspect. And that Chucky likes to drive people insane. It's this point where he's really playing with the fact that he's a killer doll and he accepts that. So he starts fucking with people. He loves making everybody think that they're all crazy, you know, like, oh, a killer doll, what? That could never happen, even though it's totally happening. So when it's coming from all of that kid's perspective, trying to like grow up in this military environment and then, oh my God, there's this cool little doll and it, it turns out that it's a real person. So these kids in these movies are interacting with Charles and they think it's the coolest toy ever because it actually is a person. So of course they get over attached and overgrown and connected like it's a best friend. So you're interested in trying to save the kid Tyler at this point. And my favorite part of the movie is this end finale where they're uh, running in from the field into a pop-up carnival because it provides us with a great location, a lot of colors, um, an awesome set. It's really intricate with the story, the things that you're able to put your characters and make them go through. If you want to be able to make your audience feel like they're watching something that's not a waste of time, you have to make your character's objective obtainable, but you have to make them achieve it through the hardest way possible. The most obstacles, you know? Like, that's what keeps good, intense storytelling. There's also the problem of not overdoing it, though, you know? So we're kind of at this ending chase scene, and one of my favorite brief looks of Chucky is whenever he gets his face sliced off. And even though he's only chasing them around for the rest of the movie, looking like this for about anywhere from five to 10 minutes, um, it still is like burned in my brain. I remember seeing that like ah, grin with like the blood just coming out of the side because it's kind of like the first step into what would be the next installment, which is the most iconic look of Chucky. I would argue because that's what pop culture sees and knows him as. Even if people who have never seen these movies know that version, they know who it is. They know it's Chucky, the killer doll. I think it makes him look scary. And especially for Tyler, the kid who's never met Chucky before this movie, seeing this grotesque bloody doll like coming to life you know we're so used to that concept and i like that they're showing that he is becoming human from spending so much time in the doll again and it's just all around disturbing and watching them triumph and you know be able to get rid of him and push him off into the fan and when he gets shredded into a bajillion pieces it's pretty much like putting something in a blender so at that point i think it's safe to say that these characters can have some sense of closure. When it comes to the overall story of this one, I think that it, it does very well and I like thinking about it and I like revisiting it. And um, 
it's a good booby, I think, but it, it's not completely memorable. Like, the score doesn't really stick out for me, um, as opposed to the first two that have, like, such chilling, eerie music that has, like, the corrupted child toy instruments behind them. This one just feels very, you know, it's in the same world, you get it, but it's, it's just very horror movie score-like, I felt. I, I'm not being able to remember a specific part that's sticking out for me right now. Um, and some of the other cons are that, you know, it's it's n not the best way to go out for a trilogy. You know, the, the first two were so good, and the second one elevated this one. Or the, the second one elevated the first one so well, and you just think about how a lot of times trilogies have this problem with being like, Bang, a great movie. Bang, a great sequel. And then, uh, hey, at least we had a third one, you know? And I'm noticing that that's kind of a thing. Um, even though there's still lots to be appreciated with lots of third chapters, I'm just wondering what what is up with that. Why we don't save some of the juge or like, why we're not planning for that to be a thing. Why not plan out a cohesive story that wraps around, you know? Um, so that's something that's I would appreciate for movies to do. I think that this franchise does pretty well in the later installments. Well, that was my review of Child's Play 3. I hope you liked it. Um, overall, it is a very impressionable one to me, but I have spent, a, the, I think, the least amount of time with this one and the original one, but I still really love the original one and it was one of the first ones I saw growing up. So um, I do have a special place in my heart for it, but uh, it is it is one of the ones where I will tend to not skip it, but put the other ones on before it. And I just like the fact that at least there was more Chucky content. Um, I like the original Child's Play trilogy, but I'm very happy that they decided to center the new movies around Chucky himself. And they make the names, you know, Bride of, Curse of, Seed of, Cult of, because he really takes the driving point and he centers in the front of the films from then. So I think this was a nice way to kind of wrap up the first little introduction story and I appreciate the Andy Barkley movie storyline. I think that there's a very good overall arc there and I can't wait until he comes back into the franchise. Or does he? Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. Oh, we all know he does. Okay, whatever. Um, but anyway, yeah, thank you so much for watching and be sure to let me know like what you thought about the movie down below and where does it stand amongst your ranking with the franchise overall and where does it stand in the, between with just the Child's Play movies and there's a part of me that wishes they would have continued making more of them with just the little kid Andy and waited till he got older to make an older story that could have been done really well. You could have had a bunch of installments in between then. Um, but they didn't do that, so, uh, are you happy with what we got? And also, this is my Chucky box set. It contains every movie, and it's the Blu-ray version. I love this little peek of a window, and, um, it's got some nice collage work on the back, and lots of special features. If ever you were able to pick this up for yourself, it's a great addition to your collection, and he's one of the most iconic killers in slasher movie history, I think. So, definitely, I love having this in my collection, and I put it on display out there with all of my other DVDs. Well, once again, thanks for watching, and be sure to check around for whenever I post something new, and check out some of my other videos, because I've done a bunch of different genres, and I plan to do a bunch more. I've even done some location visits, and I've gone over some of the items that I have. Um, be sure to look out for whenever I live stream with my friends. We do those a lot, and I'm actually going to be doing one with my friend Destiny very soon, if it's not already up. Um, I'll make sure that it's linked uh, eventually, some point, whether it's in the description or at the end of this video. And uh, thank you so much for watching and check back for whenever I post something new. All right, thanks. I'll see you next time. Bye.